Hi and welcome to a Calculus 2 video where we're going to talk about sequences and series. So first let's go over a little bit of the vocabulary that will carry throughout this unit that you're studying. One thing I'd like you to know is if n is our term number that we are talking about, then it might make sense for us to start at n equals 1, then n equals 2, n equals 3, and so forth, all the way until we get to the infinite or the idea of the last term. And again, there can't be an actual last term. We're going to talk about that limit maybe as n approaches infinity for what does that quote unquote last term look like. There are also situations where you might want to start at n equals zero because that would be the term before the n equals one. And we'll talk about that and see that in some of these examples. So first things first, if n is our term number, let's write all of these vocabulary in terms of n. So if I want to represent an even number, it should make sense to you that if I double any value, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., I will get an even number. Because again, n is whole, n is positive, um, unless n starts at 0. So 2 times that number n will for sure give me some even value. Well, if you think about how the evens and odds work, the odd is always one more or one less than that even number. So one way that I could represent that odd number is the even number 2n plus 1, or I could go backwards 1 and say 2n minus 1. So that's one way to say an even number, I would just represent it as 2n, and the odd number, I would represent it as one of those two, 2n plus 1 or 2n minus 1. Okay, previous term, current term, and next term. So we're going to label our sequence in this case, and also our series, a sub n. And that means that's my current term that I'm on, n equals 1, so maybe a sub 1, for example. My previous term is going to go back one term. So if my term number is n, my previous term then is one term ago, so subtract one from n, so a sub n minus one. And on the same note, my next term, well if previous term to current term to my next term will be a sub, and we will add one to n, so n plus one. And if I wanted the next one after that, I could keep going. It would be a sub n plus 2, etc. Again, with that sequence or series being titled a. Okay, an alternating condition is going to look something like if I have a sequence that maybe looks like negative 3, comma 3, comma negative 3, comma 3. And what you can see here is it alternates negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, etc does not matter if it starts negative or starts positive, we can represent it with an alternating condition. Okay, so I can say that if I want something to be alternating, I have to repeatedly multiply by negative one. But see, if I just put a negative one in there, I'm gonna make my sequence always negative. So I need this to alternate so I'm going to repeatedly multiply by negative one and repeated multiplication turns into this turns into this power of negative one. So it would be negative one to the n. Or you see if n is one, then this means my first term would start negative, then n is two, negative one quantity squared would make my second term positive, third term would be negative, etc. Or, 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 what if my first term started off with a positive number? Well, then I might want to say negative 1 to the n plus 1 or a negative 1 to the n minus 1. So go forward 1 or back 1. So again, negative 1 to the n, if n is 1, for example, first term, this is going to start negative, positive, then this is going to be negative, positive, negative, positive, etc. versus this other one over here, negative one, 
quantity to the n plus 1 or n minus 1. If you put in n equals 1, now you're raising negative 1 quantity squared, which would be positive, or negative 1 to the 1 minus 1, well that's negative 1 to the 0, which is also positive. So my first term would be positive, and then it would alternate from there. Okay, so I have different options, and these aren't certainly your only options for an alternating condition, but hopefully the idea of the alternating condition makes sense to you. So we have our alternating conditions on there. We have our next term, current term, previous term, and I have how to represent odd numbers and even numbers. Let me give you just a couple quick examples on how to write um, a formula or pattern for a given sequence. You'll do more complicated ones in the actual notes for this course. So let's say I have some sequence defined by, um, and let's just make this up here, 7, 10, 13, 16, etc. Now what makes this a calculus problem is that you have this dot, 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 which makes it this infinite sequence, which means this list goes on forever. Okay, let's say that I want to write a pattern for this. Well, the first thing that you might have noticed is that you are adding three every single time to get to the next term. So this is a constant rate of change or a constant addition of some value. We actually learned that to be slope. So I'll show you how I can use slope as well if I don't understand the series idea. But one way that you can write the formula or pattern or trend that you're seeing in this sequence, which will help you predict, let's say the 100th term, or the 200th term, or the 1 millionth term, without having to find the previous term, right? Because I could always just say, well, you would take the previous term and you add three. Well, that means that in order to find the 100th term, I would have to have the 99th. And in order to find the 99th, I have to find the 98th. And I don't want to go through all that work. So what I want to be able to do is just put in n equals 100 if I want the 100th term, and I want this formula to tell me the 100th term is. Okay, so I'll show you how to do that when we're done. So if I have a constant rate of change, this in turn is the idea of slope or something linear, right? Constant rate of change. Okay, so I know that repeated addition mathematically turns into multiplication. So if I'm repeatedly adding three, over time, repeated addition is multiplication. So for example, if I have three plus three plus three plus three plus three, so if I have five threes that I'm adding here, I could just instead say that I have three times five, right? I don't have to add three five times, so repeated addition turns into multiplication. Okay, so that's where I'm getting my three n from. And then you need to make this first term. So if this 7 is my n equals 1, this 10 is my n equals 2, this 13 is n equals 3, and the 16 was my n equals 4. Well, if I want to put in n equals 1, so my first term, 3 times 1, so far my a sub 1 is 3. But no, it's not. My a sub 1 is 7. So hopefully what you can see now that you're in calculus and wicked smart is that if I add 4 to this, my first term then is 7. So I figured out that if I add 4, that equals my first term. So let's try our pattern and see if it works for a sub 2. So if this is my pattern that I think will hold true or my formula, well then if n is 2, so a sub 2 is 3 times 2 plus 4, or 10. Yep, that's exactly my third term. So if I wanted to find a sub 100, it's just 3 times 100 plus 4. So my 100th term is 304. Okay, so there's my overall pattern. Now let's say we didn't necessarily figure out what we needed to add or subtract to get my first term. You could use the idea that this was linear to help you. So I could write this as two points. So for example, since I have a constant rate of change, right, or slope, and I know it's linear, 
I can say my first term is 7 and my second term is 10. And I can just write the equation in the line. So we knew we needed slope, so the change in y over change in x, I find the slope is 3. And then use either point, I'll just use that 1, 7. Here's my point slope form, y minus the y from your point equals your slope times x minus the x from your point. And if you solve this, distribute, and then add 7, you get the same thing. And I'll just put it in terms of n. Okay, I'm going to show you one more so you don't think it's all that terrible here. So let's see, what if I have the sequence um, 1, 5, 9, 13, 17 dot dot dot. So I have an infinite sequence here and you can hopefully see again that there is a constant change of me adding 4 every single time. So I start with 4n. Now think about a sub 1, right, because I need my first term to be a 1. Again, this is when n is 1, the 5 is when n is 2, the 9 is when n is 3, etc. So if I put in a 1, 4 times 1 is 4, but I don't want my first term to be a 4. I want my first term to be a 1. So in order to do that, I have to subtract 3. It's 4 minus 3 is 1. So subtract 3. So there's my formula. And you can check any along the way. So for example, I can check n is 4 should be 13. So a sub 4, 4 times 4 minus 3. So a sub 4 is 16 minus 3. Yep, that's 13. This is just a very brief, basic introduction so far on the arithmetic sequences. I'm just going to show you one basic one real quick on geometric, and then um, we'll do start your notes here in the next video. So let's say I have an infinite sequence where it looks something like this. 3, 6, 12, 24, 48 dot, dot, dot. Again, the dot, dot, dot makes this an infinite sequence, goes on forever. And now hopefully you can see that you do not have a constant addition to get from one term to the next. I add three to get from term one to term two, but then I add six and then I add 12, so it is not a constant slope. Okay, but maybe you can see something else. Well, I multiply by two to get from term one to term two. Oh, and look, you multiply by two again, multiply by two again, multiply by two again. So it's a repeated multiplication of two. So here's how we're gonna start this one. We're gonna say my a sub n is, I repeatedly multiply by two. Well, think about it. If I have two times two times two times two times two, so I have five twos that I'm multiplying, repeated multiplication, would turn into 2 to the 5th. You could use exponents instead of that repeated multiplication. So I have a power. So I'm going to say that I have 2 to the n because that is going to multiply by 2 repeatedly. Well, what are you multiplying 2 by? Well, you got to start somewhere. So I'm going to say I'm going to start at 3. Now check this because you're going to notice something when you check it. This is not the final answer. A sub 1 then would be 3 times 2 to the first. Hmm. A sub 1 is 6? No, it's not. My n is 2. Should be 6. n is 1, should be 3. I'll label all these here for you. Okay, so that's one term. I, I need to go back one term. So I don't want A sub 1 to be 6. So think about it, you're starting at three. You don't want to multiply three by anything. You just want the first term to be three. After that, that's what you start your multiplication of two by. So what I'm gonna say is not two to the n. I'm gonna say that that should be two to the n minus one. Because check it out, if I put in a 1 for n to find my first term, it's 3 times 2 to the 1 minus 1. That is 3 times 2 to the 0. 
2 to the 0 is 1, so I'm just multiplying 3 times 1, or in other words, keeping it unchanged. Then I could check my a sub 2 to see if that works. Again, we're going from this sequence right here. 3 times 2, and now n is 2. So 2 raised to the first power is 2, so a sub 2 would be 3 times 2, which is 6. And you can continue ch to check, but this absolutely works. So what we're going to say is these sequences where you are adding and you have this constant rate of change or slope are called arithmetic sequences. And the sequences where you have a constant or repeated multiplication are called geometric. And again, these are sequences because they are just a list of numbers separated by a comma. And the reason we're studying them in calculus, for example, is because they are an infinite sequence. The dot, dot, dot signifies these go on forever. So we're going to start in a few videos here looking at can we identify what that last term will approach or what the last term is going to look like. So I hope you found this introduction to sequences and series and some of the vocabulary helpful. I find that as you progress through sequences and series, you really need to be mindful of the vocabulary and understand the idea of current term, previous term, next term, even when you get to the factorials and things like that. So I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.